Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cheers in Tool Talk, a podcast that's dedicated to celebrating women who are showing up from within the hustle and bustle of everyday real life to reconnect with their magic. I'm so excited to have my friend Nadine with us here today, and she recently wore a skirt, so I'm excited to hear a little bit more about that experience, and maybe we can get started just by hearing a little bit more about what you do in the world, Nadine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Nadine Fonseca. I am the founder and CEO of Mighty Kind, which is an anti-bias magazine for kids. Um, I am a mom of four and we homeschool, which has been an extra fun layer of challenge this last year um, with the pandemic. Um, I'm married to uh, my husband who has been my best friend going on 15 years now. We met in middle school, so that's fun to go way back. Um, and I was originally born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area and have since moved and transplanted to Austin, Texas. Yay, thank you so much for being here. For anyone that doesn't follow uh, Mighty Kind, your magazine, it <laughs> there's just so much good stuff. If you go to the Instagram account, you can find all sorts of colorful graphics on there that really dive deeper into sort of this, I don't know, some magazines, my kids were naming how many, um, different advertisements were in this my daughter got like a subscription to vogue or something like that and and they were laughing they were going through they were going when does the magazine start you right. know like when <laughs> when is it when, when are we going to have some like content where we can learn something and i was like oh boy those magazines have been the same since i was a kid you know like that's that's, that's just how true. it is but i enjoy so much of your message because i really think that you're reaching a lot of people in a lot of different places in the world and you're just being super authentic and down to earth. And a lot of people I think can relate. I know I can to the message you're putting out there. So thank you for doing the work that you do. Um, oh, absolutely. I'm just happy to be in your world in that way. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad to hear that. I appreciate that feedback. And thank you for saying yes to wear the skirt. Um, I would love to hear how your experience was with the skirt. And before you sort of dive into that, I want to mention that one of my, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget, one of my favorite parts of, of your experience with the skirt was part of the sort of essay that you put with your pictures. And it says, someone is watching, awaiting inspiration. And then it went on to say, maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your sister, maybe it's whoever it might be. And then you said, maybe it's even the woman who's looking back at you in the mirror, like your younger self that needs this. So that was really touching. And I thought that a lot of people could relate to, we have no idea who we're affecting, who's right. looking at us for guidance or might get some little bit of um, hope or inspiration from the things that we're doing in the world. So I just wanted to mention that right off the bat, that that's one of my favorite parts. And then let you just let our listeners and viewers know how how it was from the time that it showed up to the time you shipped it off to the next per participant. Yeah, you know what was interesting is the ask came prior to our world really shifting, right? So, so the ask to be part of this really cool movement, and so at the time I was like, oh, this would be fun and cool and exciting. Um, but then when, when so much kind of gray loomed over us for that prolonged amount of time and, and it's still yet to completely lift, right? Um, it almost became like that rainbow really cleared away the gray for, you know, even just a day, right? Where it was like, this broke all of the monotony. This wasn't something I was gonna do again, right? And so to have that big box come and as you open it, you know, just have this thing puff out, right? <laughs> and kind of have a life of its own as you open that box. Um, it really was such a welcome disruption to the monotony of just the quarantine life that we had been living for so long. Um, um, and I think to, to see just the bright colors and the energy that it brings to a room, my kids are like, what is that? Is that for me? You know, <laughs> and 
and they I were just that. so excited. And I said, you know what? Like this rainbow is mine, you know, like this is mine to wear, mine to have fun with. Um, and when we did go to take some pictures, it was me going to the park. And I, I can't remember the last time I went to a park by myself, right? Like no kids in tow, um, no meetups, no, you know, whatever else. And so it was, it was a really uh, just refreshing moment to have some freedom, to have some fun, to be, you know, kind of silly and playful and, and just, you know, it was, it was a welcome moment to be selfish, right? And I think selfish gets such a negative connotation. Um, but I think especially for women that we, we get to, I think it's a time of, of self-care, right? To be selfish, to take those things and not have to share, you know, and, and allow ourselves the, the, um, the space to just be us as, as an individual, as a woman and not as all the other hats and roles that, that we get to wear, um, which are, which are great experiences and, and wonderful opportunities, but there is something to being selfish for just being Nadine for a day. And that, that was really fun. Oh, I love that. Just being Nadine for a day, just being Gina for a day. I right? like the way it feels. <laughs> yes. So I, I love the part about your shoes. Mm -hmm. um, you wore these black Converse as part of your, or Chucks as my right. <laughs> husband's students or my kids would call them. Um, you wore them, you had a special message about them. Can you tell us a little bit more about yeah. the shoes you had on that were actually part of your tears um, right. wardrobe, you know? Yes. <laughs> You know, I thought a lot about, you know, what would look, what would look good with the skirt, right? Because we're going to get a photograph and there's, there's always an element of vanity, right? But then also like, what's meaningful, you know, like what, what has some purpose behind, you know, the, the tears and the things that, um, that really balance out our life experiences, right? Because you can't, you can't really appreciate the true joys without the sorrows and the challenges and um, the things that you overcome to get to that summit, right? And so for whatever reason, those checks came to mind. Um, and, and I was almost like, can I pull these off as black? They're so old and so faded. I was like, do these count as gray at this point? <laughs> um, but, uh, but they were handed down to me from my sister. And uh, I, I just have one older sister. And we didn't get along growing up at all. Uh, she was very much, uh, you know, a, a great student. She had a very core group of friends um, that, you know, she did everything with. And so I was kind of left as like the ragamuffin rebel in the background, you know, trying to figure out my own path. I said, if I can't be her, then I'm going to be the opposite, you know. And, uh, and so that was, that was an interesting time growing up. But, um, but I still, I still very much looked up to her and I still, you know, we joke about, you know, I always acted like the older sister. I was always very protective of her. Um, but I remember, you know, wanting to have the opportunities and experiences that she did, right? Not from like a jealousy standpoint, but like a, man, that is so cool, you know? And so to look up to her and, and those chucks were one of those things where I'm like, well, now if I get chucks, I'm just gonna be copying her. And so I never did, right? And so when she was packing up going away to college and I was gonna be kind of on my own um, as the only kid in the household, she left them behind for me and, uh, and I remember thinking like, oh man, this is my chapter. You know, like the things she got to do in these checks, like I get to now, you know, kind of carve my own path and do my own thing. Um, and, I, and I thought a lot about, you know, where are the tears in that? And I think part of it is, you know, like that we didn't get to both wear checks at the same time and do the same things together. I think that was, that was part of it. And I think the other part was, you know, how many times do we wait for someone to give us permission to take those opportunities, right? How many times do we, you know, just kind of twiddle our thumb and not give ourselves permission to have those adventures, um, to take yes. the risks, to trust ourselves, to be prepared to fail. And I look at all of the times, you know, since getting those chucks at, gosh, I think I was 16 years old when she moved out. And I, I lived a really rough life. I wasn't a super great person as a teenager. I was a bully. And I was, you know, I, there was so many things about myself that I didn't like and things about my family dynamic that were really, really difficult. Um, and I think about all of the times that I wish I would have just given myself permission to like be okay with the things that weren't okay 
to ask for help, to accept my circumstances and, and therefore have a foundation to rise above them. But instead I just waited. I waited for someone to offer me a hand and then I, you know, rebel and push it away. You know, all of those things that I think I didn't feel deserving of being out of that pain and out of those challenges. And so for me with the Chucks, you know, really represented um, was an opportunity where I felt like someone loved me and wanted me to have the permission to go have my own adventures, to take my own risks and, and, and all of those things. Um, and, and while, you know, going into my twenties, I still needed a lot of permission. <laughs> you know, there's so much uh, vanity and insecurity that comes with, you know, going outside of, of the nest, right? Um, but I, I will tell you that when I finally hit my thirties, those, the proverbial chucks in my life came like a freight train where I was done asking permission. I was done caring what other people think. And of course I, I wanna be kind and I want people to like me and I want to raise good human beings and all of those things, but not at the expense of being so authentically who I am and standing for the things that I know are too important to care about what other people think to let that stunt what I need to be doing and what I feel really called to do. And that has turned into, you know, advocating for anti-bias education. And, you know, that's a hard thing um, because there, there is no finish line. Bias is something that is inherently within us forevermore. There is no cure. There are only, you know, lifelong remedies and work. And so to, you know, turn 30 and have that mindset shift of like, I'm done. I'm done waiting for someone to reach out and give me a hand and pull me up. If it's not me, then who? And if it's not when, if, if it's not now, then when, you know? Um, and so that's, that's really, you know, the, those checks were really a, uh, you know, metaphorical catalyst for me of why did it take me so long to wait for that permission? And at this point, what other things in my life am I waiting for permission for? Because I've got to fast track my way out of that. Yeah, I I am relating to so much of what you were what you're saying, and I Nadine on like a really personal level of of going through my own rebellion as a teenager and pushing people away and reacting so much, but not really knowing who I really was <clears throat> at that point in my life. I I was just writing this morning um, that I think at some point I became tired of breaking my own bones to fit into places I didn't even like, you know, like a mouse squishing to get into the, you know, like into the space, man, I am just, I am like tearing up over here. I, I just feel so connected to what you're saying um, with my own personal journey. And I thank you for being so vulnerable with me and for anybody who's listening or watching this right now, because I think we really, we do end up sort of molding into these people and we don't always recognize them anymore you know yeah. so I'm glad that you got the checks and I'm glad that you made them your own and I'm glad that you are giving yourself permission to grow and to stand up for others and to make space where um, it's needed so much as far as is helping people to be seen in the world and I think that that your mission and your magazine and what you're doing in the world does that so much um, oh my goodness, that was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was going to talk about swings next and now it just, you know, it's <laughs> not even sure. Um, so I was just telling you before we went on live that I had mailed you a copy of Tears and Tool, which is a women's empowerment picture book. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, got a section in it. Every few pages, the girl in the story she skips, she dances, she swishes, and she twirls, mm -hmm. and she remembers the spirit of that magical girl. And after I saw your pictures, I thought, oh man, would it have been cool to have a swing somewhere in that book? Because you're like glowing in your pictures. I mean, there's an absolute like radiance, a colorful energy that isn't even what you were wearing or what you were doing. It just sort of came from, I think, this playful energy maybe. So I would love to hear 
a little bit more about how you felt swinging. And I know yeah. you said that you hadn't gone to a playground, you know, yeah. by yourself in years. So yeah, I'm curious how that experience was. <laughs> Um, you know, what's funny is here in Texas, there's a saying, you know, if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute. Um, cause the, ch it changes so quickly and so drastically. Um, and so, you know, I had checked the weather and I thought, okay, I think we're in the clear and I show up early on a Saturday morning. So I really didn't want a bunch of people around one for the photos and two for, you know, I just, I don't need an audience at this early in the morning. And, uh, and it was like drizzling and overcast. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't start raining. Cause when it starts raining here, it's like a full on, you know, dump. So we tried to get the pictures as quickly as possible, but it was holding out and holding out and holding out. And it was just like a consistent drizzle. Um, but I will tell you, I haven't like hopped on a swing in a long time. I push kids on the swings all the time. Uh, but I was like, dang, that takes some muscle when you're trying to like lean back and, you know, like get the <laughs> camera angles. And I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting a full on workout. Like, let's hope any, any uh, glow I have will just, will blame on the drizzle and not actual sweat. But I was working <laughs> up a little bit of sweat there. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was fun. It was just, again, just to like break out of, you know, the, the mundane and the routine um, because I feel like you know it's it's very similar to when we place ourselves in different situations or groups of people or networks or events and things like that there are different parts of our personality that get to shine as we you know adapt and acclimate um, and so it very much felt like you know there was there was a part of me that came out that probably hadn't since the last time I went to a park on my own as a maybe 10 year old, 11 year old kid, you know? Um, and so it was fun. It was, it was freeing and liberating and work and, you know, all of, all of that kind of intermingled. Um, but, uh, but it was, yeah, it was a fun experience. And I just remember my, my friend who uh, was our photographer, she's, she's, she was, you know, laying in the tan bark to get some shots and she's standing up on the slide to get other shots. And I'm like, <laughs> you're probably getting just as much of a workout as I am at this point. We're both going to be covered in tan bark at the end of this, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. I love the idea of swinging. It makes me want to go and, and swing just makes yep. you want to like not think about anything and you know reach for the clouds and or the stars or whatever you know and I think I, for someone for someone like me I have a really strong personality you know some might say type a when it comes to getting things done I'm all about efficiency right and so yeah. one thing that I struggled with mentally on that swing was I'm doing all this work and I'm going nowhere right? Because the swing just goes back and forth. <laughs> and, you know, at least when the wind is blowing in my hair when I'm in my car, it's because I'm getting to a destination. I'm accomplishing something. And yeah. so to just go back and forth on a swing for an hour, I was just like, bah! but, but it was, it really forced me to just be present in the moment. Be like, you know what, what I'm accomplishing is time for myself. Like that is an accomplishment. I maybe yeah. didn't make a box to check for this, but you know, um, but that for, for a good like 15, 20 minutes of the photo shoot, I was like, I was a little frazzled. I was like, okay, are we getting just the same shot over and over again? Cause I just keep going back and forth, you know? Yes. Um, and really, yeah, really forcing myself to be present. Like, you know what? Not everything you accomplish is a destination. Um, so that was, that was an interesting little dichotomy happening in my brain at the moment. Oh, wow. Yeah. It almost sounded meditative as you were talking about it, like the back and forth, like meditation. I never really like it. You know what I mean? Like, it's right. like back and forth. What am I doing? What else can I be doing? You know, I liked Scooby-Doo as a kid because maybe that could really happen. Like it was like, a, like I could be a little serious about structure right. and wanting things to be a certain way, you know? So yeah, I can relate to that. And, and it's neat to go back and look at the pictures, you know, when you do do something like that, because you're like, oh, I did make the time and I, and it was more magical than I realized because I was in my head a little bit, you know, Definitely. but then you go back and look and you're like, oh yeah, that was good for me. Yes. So yes. I, I'm glad you had that experience where you were able to sort of connect with that energy. I, I cannot believe I did not start the show with your tears in tool moment. Oh. I was so <laughs> excited to talk to you and I just totally forgot that traditional beginning part that we do. So I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. Um, for anyone who's just joining the show for the first time, 
the tears and tool moments of life around here in this tribe, we call them the even when, especially then moments of life. And for anyone who's joining us from home, you could do this exercise um, while Nadine is doing hers as well. So we ask you to say something you like about yourself, like, I am kind. And then you say, um, even when, and that's when a detour, the unexpected sort of happens. So you could say, I am kind, even when I snap at the grocery store clerk for something, you know, and then we all end it with, especially then, because we're all in this sort of giant tool skirt circle together and we're honoring each other's journey in space. So even when, especially then, and I know that I'd asked you ahead of time to think what that might look like for you. Mm -hmm. So yes, I would love to, to hear that. Yeah. Um, so if thinking about it, I, I landed on, I am impactful even when there is no finish line, especially <sighs> then. Especially then. Oh, I could stitch that on something above my computer and my office downstairs. Yes, that is perfect. Perfectly imperfect, I guess, yes. in a way. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, especially then. Thank you for sharing that with all of us. And thank you for adding it to sort of the end of the show yeah. here. I can't believe we're already at 20 minutes. This was so nice. I, I would love you to let our viewers and listeners know where they can find you, where they can go online and connect with your mission and the color you're bringing into the world. Yeah, absolutely. We are across social media with our handle at Mighty Kind Kids, which is plural. Um, and then our website is just mightykindkids.com. Yay. Thank you so much, Nadine. It has been an absolute pleasure to get to connect with you today. And thank you for helping me to do a little healing in my own journey by um, connecting with your stories. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.